Wisecracking pretty boy Nathan Drake has been across the world, chasing after ancient treasures, often without a care for the priceless archaeological artifacts he comes across. Sorry, Marco. Soon, he'll go on his last adventure, chasing after pirate treasure in the pirate colony of Libertalia. Before we focus on that, though, let's take a look at his previous adventures and see how accurate the stories are to the actual legends. We'll be covering Uncharted 1, 2, and 3 in this video. If you want to learn about only one game or story, here are the timestamps for each part. Alright, so back in 2007, Nate takes us with him as he tracks down El Dorado, the legendary lost city of riches that's supposedly hidden in the Amazon rainforest. In the game, we find out that El Dorado, which translates to the Golden One, isn't a city of riches, but an ornate statue that doubles as a sarcophagus for an ancient Indian ruler. Spanish conquistadors found the statue in ruins and attempted to bring it back to Spain for its riches. Unfortunately, the statue was cursed and mutated the Spaniards into monsters. Nate tracks down El Dorado and learns the terrible secret of the statue. He decides to abandon the fame and fortune it can bring and fights to keep it on the island, like his ancestor Francis Drake, eventually plunging it into the ocean's depths. Now, the myth of El Dorado itself is actually a heavily mutated story based on a ritual of ascension for a group of indigenous people called the Muisca. The Muisca lived in the central highlands of what is today Colombia, and they had two leaders, one of which was called the Zipa. When a new Zipa was selected, he went through an extravagant ritual in which he was covered head to toe in gold dust and floated out onto a nearby lake named Lake Guadavita. He would wash the gold off and then throw gold and other treasures into the lake as an offering to the gods. This story of a golden man that had so much treasure that he threw it away stoked the flames of the Spaniards' greed, and they raised the continent in an effort to find the wealth of El Dorado. But no matter how much gold the Spanish found, it was never enough, and the story of even greater wealth persisted for centuries, eventually molding into the El Dorado legend. So after Drake watched his fortune sink into the sea, he winds up all alone on a sun-baked tropical beach. Sounds terrible, right? Well, it's a good thing Nate's old friend Harry Flynn shows up and takes him on a whole new adventure. This time, Nathan follows Marco Polo's journey to the east and finds out he visited the mythical city of Shambhala. Gosh, that word is so fun to say. While in Shambhala, Marco Polo found the mythical Chintamani Stone a legendary jewel that could grant any wish one had. Instead of bringing it back to Europe, he chose to leave the Chintimani Stone in its resting place of Shambhala. Through Polo's journals, Nate tracks down Shambhala and finds the beautiful city mostly abandoned. The only inhabitants left are mysterious, brutish, blue men that possess superhuman strength and endurance and fight to repel the outsiders from Shambhala. Nate fights his way to the center of Shambhala and finds the magnificent Chintamani Stone, which turns out to be blue amber formed from the blue resin they've seen their whole journey. And Nate realizes that the resin is the true treasure of Shambhala. There's a huge tree of life that secretes the blue resin, and consuming it gives the person near invincibility, but at a cost. Their skin will turn blue and their teeth blacken, making them seem less than human. Nate destroys the tree and Shambhala along with it so that the power of the resin can never be abused. Now the story in Uncharted 2 draws from two legends as opposed to one. The first is centered on the mythical city of Shambhala, meaning source of happiness, it's a Buddhist pure land that is rumored to be located in the peaks of the Himalayan mountains. It contrasts with the arid mountainous geography around it, being described as having rolling green hills with rivers and lakes flowing through it, much like it's seen in-game. Many expeditions have been mounted to find the peaceful city, but none have ever found definitive evidence of the city. It is said it's because the city isn't a physical place, but it instead sits in between the threshold of our world and heaven. Some stories also place the Chintamani Stone at the center of Shambhala. Like in Uncharted, the legends of the Chintamani Stone say it is a wish-fulfilling jewel that can bring wealth, 
fame and immortality to the wielder, but there's no warping of the physical self for doing so. It's usually depicted as a luminous pearl or as a flaming jewel, quite different from the blue amber that makes up the Chintamani Stone of Uncharted. So after destroying yet another priceless archaeological find, Nate sets his destructive sights on another lost city, the Atlantis of the Sands, Ubar. It was a city of immense wealth that was destroyed by God for the arrogance of its citizens. Nate follows convoluted clues left by Francis Drake and T.E. Lawrence to find that Ubar's location is in the Rubah Khali Desert in the north of Yemen. On the way, however, Sully gets kidnapped and Nate gets lost in the desert. He is rescued by a Bedouin sheik named Salim, who tells Drake the tale of Ubar. 3,000 years ago, King Solomon ruled Ubar, and had command over the jinn, which are genies. The evil jinn rebelled against Solomon, and he had them imprisoned in a brass vessel which he tossed into the watery depths of Ubar. Evil befell the city shortly after, and it has been abandoned ever since. Nate and Sully fight through a sandstorm to find the city of Ubar, and discover that the imprisoned jinn tainted the water with their power. The population of Ubar began hallucinating and fighting each other, leading to the destruction of their city. Nate prevents Marlow from obtaining the gin vessel by destroying the winch that's pulling it up, but also triggers a sinkhole. Sully and Nate escape the sinking city and watch it get swallowed up by the sand, thus capping off Nate's hat trick of destroyed priceless artifacts. Now in the game, Nate mentions that Ubar has had many names through the years, and that's true in reality as well. Its most famous nickname, Iram of the Pillars, is mentioned in the Quran, which says, Have you not considered how your lord dealt with the Ad? With Iram, who had lofty pillars, the likes of whom had never been seen in the lands? It's known that the Ad tribe was destroyed by a violent storm, but it's unknown if Iram is connected to them or if it was a separate city, tribe, or region. Now the source of the name Ubar comes from an explorer named Bertram Thomas. In 1930, as he was trying to cross the Rubah Khali, his Bedouin guides pointed to a track and told him it led to Ubar, which was a city great in treasure that had been destroyed by God. Intrigued, Thomas marked the trail on a map, intending to return, but never did. He recounted the story to T.E. Lawrence, who gave it the romantic name, The Atlantis of the Sands and was convinced that there was a lost city under the sands of the desert. But years passed and nothing ever came up. Until in 1992, a team of archaeologists led by Nicholas Clapp claimed they found the lost city of Ubar. Using ancient maps and satellite imagery, the team found ancient camel paths that led to a previously known Bedouin well along a frankincense caravan route at Shisar. The only thing of note about the well were the ruins of a rudimentary fort that seemed to be only a few hundred years old. But as the team began excavating, they began to find artifacts from Rome and Persia which seemed to suggest widespread trade, and eventually uncovered a large octagonal fortress with 10 foot tall walls and 30 foot tall towers dating back 2000 years. What seemed to cement the theory was the fact that the fortress met a cataclysmic end. A large portion of the fortress was destroyed when it collapsed into a sinkhole. Seems like we didn't need Nathan Drake to find or destroy Ubar, huh? So those are the legends of Uncharted presented in the trilogy and the real world inspirations. You know, it's a good thing Nathan Drake is a fictional character. After all, if he found any of these lost cities in reality, he'd probably end up destroying them. Could you imagine Machu Picchu sliding down the mountain ridge it's on? That would suck. But still, these games give us an awesome look into history, and Naughty Dog does an amazing job of giving us a look at what these lost cities probably looked like. They're tackling the pirate colony of Libertalia next, and personally, I can't wait to see what's in store. Thank you for watching, and see you later! So during Laura's journey to find the mythical Russian Atlantis, she comes across this young lady who claims there's another legend in the area. A supernatural witch that killed her grandmother and has terrorized the Vale for decades.